Hello everyone, I'm Cassandra and I'm mom and this is Millennial and Mom and in today's video we are back yet again for another Marry the First Sight season 10 episode 13 review Secrets and Lies and I wonder what Zach and Michael's gonna tell us on this episode. So let's get into the video. So for our new viewers who are not used to watching our videos, mm -hmm. how we do our Married at First Sight video is we start with the couples that have the least amount to say, and then we go to the couples who have like three, four pages on them. <laughs> so we're going to start off with Austin and Jessica. And basically what we see them from them in the beginning is we see them at dinner, you know, having a nice dinner. Yeah. Talking about moving in together after the thing is over because they can't stay in that apartment which i thought they could but i guess that was previous seasons of married at first sight one of the biggest issues that come up is that austin travels for work yeah and jessica isn't too keen of that she's like well what am i gonna do trying to figure out ideas like oh maybe she can work at night when he's away mm -hmm. but she thinks that's a problem and I don't feel like that's a really big problem. Do I don't think? either. No, what her working at night or him traveling for work? Him traveling for work. I don't think so either. I think that she's thrown off guard that he travels or may have to travel as much. I think she was thinking like one to two days, but he said up to 10 days. And I'm like, well, if that's his job, then he's going to have to travel for work. I don't know what the big deal is. In the next scene, we see Dr. Viviana and she's going to meet up with all the couples or give them tasks to do. So Dr. Viviana meets up with them and she asks them, so what's going on with you guys? How's it been going? Jessica and Austin say, oh, we're having a good time. We're happy. We're growing as a couple. And you can see that they're growing as a couple. They don't have too much really going on outside influences, mm -hmm. right? Jessica is still stuck on him wanting to be in love with her. Yeah. Because she says that she's in love with him. Mm -hmm. And he's like, you know, it takes time. But he's told her, at least for the last two times, two episodes, that he's just not there yet. So Dr. Viviana goes on to tell Jessica, well, you know what? With you saying love, you know, it might make you feel vulnerable. And then Dr. Viviana was like, oh, did I just share some light here? She's like, well, yeah, you know. You know, one of us is here. Austin's just kind of looking like... So Jessica finally tells Austin that she loves him. And I was like, it's about time because she's <laughs> been there for a while. And you know what? Austin tells her again, you know what? It's going to take me some time to get there. And Jessica feels like her feelings are hurt a little bit. Like, how come he hasn't opened up to her? Because she feels that they're at a point where the love is there. But she says that she can feel it from him. So I think probably by the stay married or not stay married when the decision day, she may get the L word. Next, we have Derek and Katie. Mm -hmm. And from this segment, what I got was when Viviana, Dr. Viviana came and talked to him about intimacy and opening up. Derek explained that you know he still has an inner child within him mm -hmm. and katie doesn't have that inner child within her because her parents got divorced and she always felt like she had to be there to mediate between the two of them whenever they got into fights and stuff yeah and i guess she kind of had a revelation as to why she like kind of bashes on Derek's dreams mm -hmm. and Derek got a sense of why she does it to him and was like you know maybe i can take her out to dave and busters you know go east egg hunting and i'm like well that's just fun stuff to do anyways yeah <laughs> besides you know having or not having inner child within her katie got emotional about that and she tried to explain you know she just felt like she had to grow up fast and that's really the reason why that she can't relate to Derek. i think mm -hmm. so later on top of other things right Later in the next scene, we see Derek and Katie, their task is to go show different things about their family. So Derek takes Katie to his mom's garage where his mom has things of her, his childhood growing up and of his siblings' childhood, just of the family. Do you have that much stuff of me and my brother? Of course I do. <laughs> like letters and stuff written down? Yeah. Really? Even stuff that I've written down for you guys, even when you're babies, I have that stuff. So one day you guys can have that too. So... They see mementos of Derek and the little things he wrote like to the tooth fairy when he was little and to Santa Claus. I thought that was cute. It was. That his mom saved and different high school pictures. And Katie stumbles upon like a poem that De Derek wrote. And she's reading it and she's like, really? Who are you? Because it was a nice like a romantic thing. Kind of mm -hmm. like a, 
It was about love. Yeah, she's like, what do you mean? You've never been in love before. She's like, who are you? Like, what's going on? She, to me, she had a really nasty attitude that, to me, carried over from last week, to be honest. Mm -hmm. I mean, these are his mementos. He said he wrote the, that poem in the ninth grade, ninth, tenth grade. Mm -hmm. What's the problem? Because she was like, well, how would you even know what love is? How would you experience love? Well, it's like, girl, why does someone have to experience love? Don't you watch romantic movies or do you watch horror movies? Well, still, the point is, Katie, to me, just came off real like, ew, like, why would you do that? Like, he can't write about stuff like that. And when she found his memento from college, she was like, oh, mm -hmm. who gave that to you? The oh. cooler. Yeah. Oh, well, with his college bucket list. Mm hmm. Like, what do you say, Savannah or whatever her name is? Oh, well, Savannah. Maybe you enjoy the beach with Savannah. I'm like, really, Katie? And But does she not remember before this experiment? She was just holding on to her ex? <clears throat> not even five weeks ago. Not even five weeks ago. She came off very jealous, and Derek picked up on that. Mm -hmm. And I was like, I was done with Katie with that. Because he's showing you his mementos. He opened up to you. I've been done with Katie. Now we have Mika and Michael. And Mika and Michael, you know, they're talking about their day and stuff. Mm -hmm. And Mika was like, I got my, um, she had a lap stubs. With a laptop there. Right here. You know, just wanted to show Michael. So maybe he would be open to showing her too. Mm -hmm. And the next thing we know is he goes into a drawer and pulls out a paper. I thought right? it was construction paper, personally. I was like, that's not no pay stuff. That's construction paper. But it turns out it was like, I guess, well, from what it looked like to me, a contract. And I'm like, okay, a contract could have the numbers on it or whatever. And then Bond said, she foreshadowed, was like, he made that up. And yeah. I'm like, who would make up a contract? You know? Oh, okay. I mean, I guess people make up pay stubs, but a whole contract... That's a lot. Uh, he showed her the contract, uh -huh. and she was looking at the numbers, and he was like, you know, in a few weeks, I'll have the pay stubs. But the real tea is, few weeks, it would be decision day, so he wouldn't have to anymore. <laughs> but true, she, <laughs> she was punching the numbers and was like, mm-mm, mm-mm. This is not adding up. <laughs> she was like, what is this? This whole episode tickled me. Just go ahead and roll with it. And he was like, you know, you know the numbers from here. It's going to be different from the numbers because he took out his phone, like on the phone, you know, it was two different numbers. And she was like, you know, I got a math degree. I was like, boom. Your gross pay plus all this, it's like a double digit mishap. Yeah. And then she was like, she took out, was it her phone or a calculator? She's like going on a calculator. Her phone calculator. And I was saying to you, I was like, mm -mm. first of all, that's construction paper that he wrote that on from his before and after care. That's what that was. And with her being having a math degree, she looks at financials all day. So I'm sure she could look at that and be like, that don't that don't add up. Because she was really trying to get those numbers to add up. And then she's like, well, just write it down. Mm -hmm. She's like, this still don't add up. Right. He wrote it down. And I can tell what Michael's lying. I've been picking up on his body language. Whenever mm -hmm. he does a couple things, whenever he does like that little arm fold and goes back, mm -hmm. I'm like, he lying. Whenever he go like this. Oh, for sure. You lie. Like, I can see when he's lying. Mm -hmm. And she, next thing we know, she goes like Montre. And we're like, who's Montre? But it's the producer. She's like, I can't, I can't do this. Like, I can't do this. I got to walk away because mm -hmm. he's lying to me. Yeah. And I don't like that he's lying to me. And the producer's like, well, why don't you go back in there and tell him that? And she's like, I have been telling him that. Like, what more do you want me to tell him? Like, do you guys want to be with a liar? No. Right. And I agree with that. Like, he lies so much. He and does. it's like, you're lying and then you're trying to make people feel like they're stupid. You could at least ask the girl what she graduated and then maybe you would have had your numbers right. Well, he didn't get a chance to really know her from the honeymoon, so he would know what he did for a living because he's he trying to figure out. The, he was worried about the booty first. He was. He's trying to figure out, or make her, or make us believe he's does yoga. He does. He's a principal. He does this. He does that without finding out what she really does for a living. She just wanted to know, can we support ourselves? Know what the breakdown would be if we move past these eight weeks. Mm -hmm. And he can't do that. And that's a problem. So after all that, we see Dr. Viviana come over. And Dr. Viviana asks, so what's been going on? And Mika says, Michael's not being honest. Now, raise your hand if you knew that's what she was going to say. 
Michael's not being honest about his financials or anything like that. And she said, well, what's going on, Michael? He said, well, it's not that black and white. It's not that clear. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it, it is. is. <laughs> all you have to do is tell the truth. Mika says, all he has to do is open up, tell the truth, show me what, show me what you got, <laughs> and we could go from there. You don't have to keep going around and around about this because how you expect me to trust you? Right. She's like, how do you want me to be vulnerable and you're not being honest? Right. And so um, Mika says, he's only saying all this because he's been called out. Like, you know, he doesn't open up to her, tell her what's going on until he's being called out. And mm -hmm. to me, it's a free, how would you say? It's a free session for Michael when the doctor comes over. <laughs> would you say so? Yeah, because every time... She comes over. It don't matter who comes over. Right. It could be Dr. Pepper, which we haven't seen in a while. She's probably over it a mess. Dr. Viviana or Pastor Cal, whenever one of them comes over, he starts breaking down about mm -hmm. him being adopted and his mom mm -hmm. and his family yep. and why he can't be honest. Well, Michael says that he's never been fully able to process the things that's going on in his life, uh, whether it be the woman that gave birth to him. No, those are his words. And that he feels that talking about these things makes it hard for him to open and trust anybody. But I was like, when he was talking about that, mm -hmm. I was like, how do we go on from you talking about your pay stubs to you explaining why you don't have a job, allegedly, to your mom, your mom and, 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 and your childhood. Why you can't open up because you didn't want people to feel a type of way about her. Because I was like, who are you talking to? Yeah, he, he just he just skipped over that topic. We were talking about pay stubs. We were like, what? what, what where'd this come from? But he tends to mention his childhood every topic. Every time they get into a disagreement, that's one of the first thing he mentions. But um, Dr. Viviana asks, does it make you feel that it would do you good if you were to open up the first time. Because if you say something wrong or misleading, wouldn't it make it seem like you're lying or not telling the truth? And Michael says, you know, when you're used to doing something that you always know to do, it's like a survival technique, you're gonna keep doing that because it's a form of like keeping yourself safe. And she was trying to get to show Michael that, but in order to move on with your wife, you have to open up, you have to be able to give her some type of trust if she's asking you, you should be able to reciprocate you know and it goes both ways mm -hmm. michael said that he understood that mika also expressed that wow you know now he's really opened up to dr viviana so she could kind of see where he was coming from but, with his emotions yeah but at first she was like well he's playing the victim he's not being honest to me mm -hmm. but then she was like moving closer to him but like yeah well maybe she could start to understand but me whole time was like no i was like no too mm -mm. No, too. Ain't no way. Because it's, it's been a consistent thing, and we're not even Mika. It's right. consistent. So the next day, Mika meets up with Michael's sister, LaTanya, or LaToya. She wants to know about Michael and his past. And his sister kind of said the same thing. Not kind of. She said the same thing mm -hmm. that Michael has said every episode. I'm like, did he call her? <laughs> I'm like, maybe they talked to each other beforehand. Right. Because she was like, well, you know, he, you know, his childhood and how he was adopted and he didn't, maybe he feels like he can't trust you, things like that. I'm like, but I'm just like, well, you're like that. I'm just like, y'all in the same family. It's not like he got adopted by like a whole nother family, moved to a whole nother state. Yeah. His aunt or somebody's, it don't matter who it was, yeah. somebody within his family adopted mm -hmm. him. And one of the things that his sister also said was like, you know, you might call something lying. But he's going to call it exaggerating. That right there was a problem for me. Right. Because that to me is enabling his behavior. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, regardless if she feels like, oh, you know, because he had this type of childhood growing up, he was still, like you said, he was still with family. And lying is misleading and is a lie. Right. Like nobody from my brother's past, present, or future girlfriends is going to summon me to me and <laughs> ask me why my brother's lying. I don't know why he's lying. You or me. That's not what I'm going to do. <laughs> then we have Brandon and Taylor. And I personally thought like they were done done. Me too. But I guess we see them back on the screen. <laughs> and they're going to dinner or lunch. Dinner. To a restaurant, mm -hmm. basically. They look good. Taylor got a new hair. I She's like bright it. and healthy. It's looking good. Mm -hmm. And over here having small conversation and stuff. Just going back and forth. Yeah. But the whole time I was just like, why? Me too, actually. 
Why Me are too. We this? Taylor asked Brandon, are you happy with your current situation? Are you happy living where you're living? Brandon says, well, yeah, but I would like to be living with my wife, you know, if we got along. So where do you want me to be? And Taylor's like, well, where do you want to be? And Brandon's like, well, <laughs> this is like a back and forth kind of thing. Uh, I'd rather be at home, but do you want me in a spare bedroom? She's like, well, where do you want to be? Spare? You know, mm. just back and forth, back and forth. I was over it, to be honest, the whole scene. Yeah, me too. Brandon ends up coming back to the house because Taylor invited him. They end up staying in the same room together this time. And then the dog jumps in the bed. You know, the dog is always trying to hump on Brandon. He's like, oh, God, here we go, right? So they get in the bed. They talk. They're comfortable. And they talk about, well, how was the day? And, you know, Taylor's like, well, did you like the dress I have on? And I didn't hear you give me compliments. You know, she's fishing. I mean, give it time. You guys trying to connect, you like trying to make him say, oh, you look pretty, you look nice. I mean, he just came home for the first time and who knows when. From Dr. Viviana, their task was to see where Brandon grew up because Brandon is born and raised in D.C. Brandon takes Taylor to the basketball court that he played on as a kid and he has lots of memories there from with his friends and just playing hide and seek and just hanging out at the park. Him and Taylor end up playing a game of basketball, I guess. And, you know, they're making small talk and it's like, this whole scene made me uncomfortable because I'm just like, y'all were just arguing. Beefing. Yeah. This whole six weeks. Mm hmm. Like, it don't make sense to me. Well, they get through that process, and Taylor was happy that Brandon showed her. And Brandon was like, you know, I've never showed this to anybody. Like, no, she's the first one that knew this about me. And I was like, well, I guess that's a step in the right direction. Now, all the viewers know. <laughs> but for now. Taylor, it's a step in the right direction if they're trying to make progress for the sake of of each other in the show. Another task later that evening is like a little card game with little things on it, like give compliments or tell me what you like or things about each other. And one of them is like a card, like the number eight. And Brenda's like, oh, I'm gonna get an eight second kiss. And I actually mm -hmm. thought that was awkward. It was. It definitely felt like they were um, being paid extra. <laughs> well, but I wouldn't say kiss. all that, but it seemed awkward. It wasn't like a romantic thing, which is kind of like a, like a hold and just lastly we have mindy and zach mm -hmm. and we see mindy out to lunch with some of her friends and they're talking about the recommitment ceremony and she's talking about how she decided to recommit with some non-negotiables mm -hmm. but then her friends asked well did zach recommit and she was like yeah he did and they were like why Right. <laughs> but they should ask Mindy why she decided to recommit because it don't make sense. Like her other friend said, you know, mm -hmm. he's giving you the bear of the bare minimum. Right. And I've never seen such a thing on Married at First Sight ever. Have you, Mom? Because we've been watching it since season one. Their bare minimums or someone? Mm -hmm. The bear of the bare minimum. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, but there's levels to the disrespect that's happened before on the show. Zach is truly in his own league with this. Because <laughs> at least everybody else moved in. And then she finally talks about the secret. Because she was like, you know, we've been, me and Zach's been hanging off camera. Because mm -hmm. that's what she wanted. That was one of her non-negotiables. Right. And she was like, the secret was, he found out that I got a text from my ex saying that he wanted to pick me up from the airport. And she was like, well, how'd you find out about it? And he was like, you know, it's no one that you would even know to name. Right. That should have been a key signal number one. Right. Right there. <laughs> but then uh, one of Mindy's friends had a uh, flashback and she was like, hold on. Mm -hmm. You know, I do recall you telling me this because she was the one who picked her up from the airport. Right. And she was like, now that you said something, I did tell somebody. And she was like, who, girl? Or at least we were like, who, girl? Right. <laughs> exactly what we said. <laughs> and she was like, Lindsay. Lindsay. And when she said Lindsay, I fell dead to the floor. I was <laughs> out like a light. I'm like, I knew it. I knew it would be that lady. Well, first of all, <laughs> lady. <laughs> first of all, that weren't even no secret. Well, it wasn't a secret, but Th that's not even a secret to even just... to even be like, I can't tell you. I'm expecting a secret to be something juicy, like, mm -hmm. you know, you pregnant mm -hmm. and you on the show. And Lizzie told me not like I heard that your ex may have texted you to pick you up from the airport. Mm -hmm. That's all you got, Zach. Mm -hmm. 
That's all he had. That right there shows how he wasn't in this from the beginning. So after Mindy learned that information, was she not mad? Or was she mad? She was mad. We can see it on her facial expression. Even though she wasn't, you know, like going off, we can see that she was mad. So she was like, I guess I'm going to have to have a talk with Zach because he's lying to me again about my friend. Mm -hmm. So we see her summon him over to her house because that's her house. At Mindy's, <laughs> like we always say. He mm -hmm. got the wine and he's about to make a toast. He's oh, like, yeah. You know, these last few days, they've been nice or whatever he said. He said, whatever I've been like happy. Said. I've been ha I said, I got it right here. He said, I've been happy <laughs> and everything's been worth it. Mm -hmm. And Mindy was like, no. She's like, I can't even cheers to that. He right. was like, well, I'm going to drink anyways. He said, I went out with my friends and they told me what you said. And who said it? And who said it? And Zach's looking like, hmm. And he's like, well, yeah. Let me get comfortable. Yeah. He was like, well, you know, I didn't want to seem like I was throwing someone under the bus. That's why I didn't tell you. He said, I'm sorry that I made it harder than what it was. Mindy's like, so, okay, so you didn't want to tell me, but instead you told a lie and you disrespected me. So you haven't been telling me the truth. You know, she's trying to give him the way out, trying to get him to admit why he didn't say what he said. Zach says, mm, hmm, uh, I didn't try to hurt you and I regret doing the things that I did. Mindy says, well, being able to not trust my husband is a problem for me. And Zach says, well, he doesn't want to give up on the marriage and... He also says that he's sorry for the lack of transparency and he doesn't know what else to say. Transparency. Yeah. So Mindy says, well, I have to make my decision. Mindy says, you purposely made me look like a liar and a fool. You know, she says, I forgave you for that. I have forgiven you for that. See, Mindy is now, you know, getting some strength. She says, so I'm sorry to say this, Zach, but uh, this marriage is over. Get your stuff and get out and leave the key. But I was like, what stuff? <laughs> he didn't bring nothing. Right. But he, he left with the sweats that he brought from the last time. Yeah. I'm like, he acted like he was going to go look for something. Mm -hmm. He left with his sweats, the t-shirt, the socks, and the dog. Oh. But you know what? I didn't see him leave the key. I didn't see that because I was looking for the key. Mindy's sitting there and she was like, upset she was you could tell she was trying not to cry but mm -hmm. you know what she needed to cry this time because i've been like mindy I, we can't feel bad for you no more you know what it is it's been what it is even before you learned the secret mm -hmm. he disrespected you in many ways from a to z hopefully they were angry tears not sad tears because it really wasn't nothing to be sad about because you didn't do anything wrong i personally uh -huh. first of all would have been done a long time ago yeah. but if i was to stick through it and mm -hmm. then hearing all these lines and hearing that my friend betrayed me yeah i would be angry mm -hmm. just saying well mindy did say that she felt embarrassed so i could see her having angry and frustrated tears because she tried for so long that you know she don't like the way it's going to be portrayed to her friends and her family, you mm -hmm. know. So I, I understand that. Later on, Dr. Viviana meets up with Mindy at Mindy's. And she asks what's been going on. And Mindy dropped that bombshell that she told Zach this is over. And Dr. Viviana's like, I can't keep the smile off my face. I was like, <laughs> are you supposed to say that as a therapist? But, you know, she did tell Mindy during the recommitment ceremony, set your boundaries, know what it is that you want, and accept nothing less. So Mindy told her, you know, she gave the ultimatum, and that's what it was. And Dr. Viviana was like, yeah, I'm glad you found your voice, which is excellent. So then the next scene, we see Dr. Viviana meet up with Zach. Zach says to Dr. Viviana, she's like, oh, how's it going? Zach says, oh, I'm doing well. And he's realizing the different variables in relationship that he's having with Mindy and says, you know, he, they're trying to find positive moments. And Dr. Viviana's like, listen, Zach, <laughs> Mindy told me everything already. Mm -hmm. So why don't you just come clean? <laughs> and he's just kind of looking like, damn, you know? He didn't think that they would know. It's exactly a show based on y'all. Exactly. So Zach is now talking in circles like he usually does. He's just saying just all kind of stuff out the blue. Didn't even mm -hmm. write it down because he's just talking in circles. And Dr. Vivian asks, did he lie to his wife just to lie? Or did he lie mm -hmm. to protect Lindsay? Which one is it? He didn't say... 
he lied. He said he was being misleading. Okay, misleading leads to a lie. And as Dr. Viviana said, you know, you're protecting Lindsay more you're protecting than your own wife. Yeah. It's like that is so disrespectful. Mm -hmm. And I was really, really, really hoping that we would see Lindsay in this episode. I need to see Lindsay and Mindy come together. I just need, I need the conversation. I don't know if Mindy would even take it there to Lindsay because she let her slide on the phone. So I don't know taking it there in person would be. But after Dr. Viviana talks to Zach and Zach goes all the way around, Viviana's like, listen, I know it's over, you know, the best of luck to you. And that was pretty much it. But in the final scene, we see Mindy have a divorce party. She mm. deserved that party. She deserved some happiness. And a bunch of her friends came over and some of us were looking for Lindsay. I personally knew she wasn't going to be there. There was too many people there. <laughs> that would have been the best time. <laughs> it would have. But I'm glad Mindy found her voice. She had a good time. Her friends were there to support her. Mm. And she could move on. There should have been candy or something in the piñata. Some kind of favors. Well, maybe they didn't want the candy for the dog. I don't know. Favors. Some party favors. Oh. Know? Well, they had drinks. So that was all that happened on this week's episode of Married at First Sight. Mm -hmm. And I'm really, really, really excited to see next week's episode because it just looked like everything's going to explode between Katie and Derek, even though we already knew Katie was, you know, Michael and Mika, mm -hmm. Brandon and Taylor, because why did y'all even get back together? Y'all don't even like each other, clearly, you know. <laughs> so I think, is this the last episode next week? I believe it is next episode before the decision day. So once again, thank you guys for watching our videos. We really appreciate all the likes, the comments, the new subscribers. Thank hey, y'all. Hey. Hope y'all stick with us and be sure to stay tuned for more videos we have coming out this week. And as always, live simply, be grateful.